Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV with a new RV orientation on this 2019 Thor Motor Coach Hurricane 29M Class A motorhome. Uh, so we'll start right at the front of the motorhome and work around the outside, then we'll go inside and I'll show you how some of the things work in there. So starting right here at the front, to uh, access uh, your engine compartment, you can lift up on the hood. Uh, this locks here uh, with a uh, key on your key ring. But to access the uh, engine compartment, lift up like so. There's not a lot of uh, uh, maintenance items in here that you're going to uh, need to access yourself. Uh, most of the uh, maintenance uh, on the engine and uh, drive components uh, will be done through a, uh, a Ford dealer or a, or a, a heavy truck store. Uh, and any of the RV uh, repair work uh, that you need done will be done through us. Um, but there are a couple of things in here um, that I'd like to show you. Uh, one is your engine starting battery, and it's right here and nice and easily ac accessible. Uh, so if you do need to charge or boost the engine start battery, you can do that from here. Um, you also have the ability using the emergency start switch inside the cab to boost the engine battery using the RV battery. And I'll show you that when we get inside. There's also a couple of these 100 amp uh, 12 volt resettable circuit breakers uh, located uh, around the outside. I'll show you where they are. Uh, one is here and a few more in the battery uh, compartment. Uh, these are for various uh, 12 volt uh, features of the motorhome, uh, automatic leveling systems, that emergency start uh, function, uh, there's one for just the general uh, uh, 12 volt uh, system from the battery uh, and they are resettable. Uh, so if you are having problems with your 12 volt, uh, any of your 12 volt items in the RV, uh, this is a good place to start. Uh, there, there'll be a yellow tab popped out and uh, just push that back up to reset that circuit breaker. Um, your washer fluid reservoir is nice and easily accessible here uh, and some of your other uh, uh, reservoirs and uh, dipsticks. Uh, you've got your transmission fluid dipstick right up here uh, labeled in yellow and same thing on the other side for oil, uh, oil dipstick uh, uh, marked with yellow as well. Moving around the side of the motorhome, uh, you've got a couple of uh, access uh, doors here on the side. Right in the front, this is where you'll access your hydraulic uh, leveling system uh, and the components for that. So the pump and reservoir and everything. Um, not a lot that you should need to do here. Uh, just kind of uh, periodically check the level of the uh, hydraulic fluid just to make sure that you don't, you're not leaking hydraulic fluid through one of the leveling legs or something. Uh, but it's, it's uh, unlikely that you uh, should need to top that up for quite some time anyway. Uh, there is a 15 amp fuse in here. If your leveling system uh, isn't working, uh, this is a good, uh, a good uh, likely culprit. So you can check that. And there are some uh, requirements to be able to run the leveling system uh, that we'll go through once we get inside. And I'll show you where the, the uh, leveling control panel is. Right behind that, just a simple uh, storage compartment. Another storage compartment here. All of these uh, storage compartments are lighted and these lights are actually controlled from inside, uh, from the uh, uh, LCD touchpad, or you can use the app. There's a, a, a wireless Bluetooth app for your smart device to control these lights as well. Up here is your hot water tank. This is an Atwood hot water tank, so no, um, no anode rod on this. It just uses a simple, uh, simple plastic drain plug. So the motorhome is winterized right now. When you go to fill it up with water, you'll need to, uh, re you'll need to uh, reinstall the drain plug before you can fill that tank. And likely when you go to drain it, you'll pull this plug out to drain the water from the tank. Before you pull that plug out, make sure to release the pressure from the tank using this pressure release valve. Uh, the tank sits at about 40 PSI when the water system is pressurized. So you won't want to pull that plug out without releasing the pressure. Um, no adjustment uh, on this uh, model of tank for uh, water temperature. 
Um, there is a gas air mixture adjustment here, uh, but that's not likely something that you'll do yourself. That would be done by one of our RV technicians, should it ever need to be. Uh, right here is where you'll find your city water connection. If you're parked at a site that has water hookups, you can hook your hose directly up to here. Then you don't have to worry about filling your fresh water tank uh, and you don't have to use your water pump for water pressure. It'll pressurize right from the source. Uh, we do recommend using a water pressure regulator when you're hooked up via your city water connection. Just a little brass piece about this big that goes on the end of your hose to maintain proper operating water pressure in the motorhome. Outside shower is pretty simple. Um, has two uh, taps, hot and cold. Extends up to about that high. Um, don't forget to winterize this when you're doing your winterizing. It's a component that's commonly forgotten. And below that, we've got some more plumbing features. This is your where you'll do your sewer dumping. So the RV comes with a 20-foot medium heavy-duty sewer hose. Uh, when you go to dump your holding tanks, open up this uh, little access uh, port here and attach the sewer hose uh, onto here. Other end goes into the ground, obviously. And then you have two valves, a larger black valve and a smaller gray valve. Always dump the black valve first. Uh, this is your actual sewer. And then once that's finished dumping, you can close this valve and dump the gray valve. That's your sink and shower water. That will use the uh, gray water to flush any uh, sewage contents through the hose uh, so that there's nothing left in there when you have to go disconnect that hose. You've also got a Santee flush system on this motorhome. So when you're dumping that black water holding tank, you can hook your garden hose up to here and it'll spray out the inside lining of that tank. So it'll spray off the walls of the tank and the monitor probes to keep that monitor panel uh, reading accurately on your touchpad inside or on your smart device. The other thing that you've got in here is your low point water line drains. If you want to drain all of the uh, water out of the water lines in the RV, you can open up all of the taps and these two uh, valves, these are the lowest point of your water system, so all of the water can drain out. Um, I think that basically covers everything in here. Your power cord attaches onto the side right here. So it's a 30 amp marine style power cord. So the power cord uh, just attaches right onto the side of the RV. It's a 30 amp service. So a lot of the RV sites that you camp at, you'll be able to plug right into the 30 amp power. We also supply the park adapter uh, to break it down to 15 amp so that you can plug in to a normal household uh, power outlet or extension cord. And below that is where you'll find your cable TV inlet if you do happen to be parked at a camp that has uh, cable TV. A couple more vents here. Uh, the one on the top is your fridge. You can open up this panel to access the back of the fridge for maintenance or cleaning. Um, not, very, uh, not very often that you need to get in there though. It's primarily just a vent. The fridge needs some airflow uh, to work properly. And below that is your furnace exhaust. Again, some access for uh, serviceable components of the furnace, uh, but unlikely something that you're ever going to need to access yourself. Uh, do be aware that it gets very hot when that furnace is running. So if you've got young kids around the RV, make sure they know not to touch that. Another storage compartment here at the back. This is also where you'll find your slide out uh, control board. Um, if you ever need to manually uh, retract the slide out, if you've had some kind of electrical problem and need to get that slide in, you can put this into manual override mode by pressing uh, the black button six times and holding it down on the seventh until the light starts to blink. That'll bypass any uh, safety features of the slide out so that you can use the slide switch to bring it in manually. You'll only be able to do that one time, then you will need to bring it to an RV dealership. It's unlikely that you'll ever be in that position, but if you ever do need, uh, if you ever do have a problem with the slide out and need to bring it in, that's how you'll do that. Fuel fill right here. Um, Regular uh, gasoline, obviously. Don't mistake that with your uh, water fill, which is on the other side. I'll show you when we get there. 
And this is where your uh, gas powered generator uh, is accessed from. So you can uh, start up the generator from the remote panel inside on the touchpad. There's also some uh, automatic start settings that you can uh, program there, but you can uh, manually start the generator from out here as well uh, using the, uh, the start stop button. If you go to manually start the generator, uh, make sure you press, uh, press and hold the stop prime button until the red light comes on. That primes it with fuel. Then you can press and hold the start button until the generator uh, actually starts up. Around the back of the motorhome, you've got your uh, trailer hitch. Uh, motorhome's already wired with seven pole trailer wiring for uh, uh, clearance lights and turn signals. Um, it is pre-wired for brakes, but there's no brake control installed in the motorhome. So if you plan to tow a trailer with electric brakes, you will have to have the electric brake control module installed. Here's your outside kitchen. Um, pretty simple uh, operation of this stuff. It's just a simple uh, electric uh, 110 volt fridge. So you will need to be plugged into power or have your generator running for this fridge to work and hot and cold water access here. Right here is a uh, propane quick connect. If you've got a uh, low pressure propane device with a quick connect uh, fitting, you can hook it up to there. Uh, stoves and barbecues, that kind of thing. And right next to that is the actual propane system. Uh, so this is an ASME propane tank. It does need to be filled by somebody who's certified to fill propane bottles. Um, you'll find those people at most, uh, most service stations. Um, in order to uh, open the uh, propane valve, uh, just, just open the, uh, uh, the knob here. Anytime you open a propane valve, always open it slowly and all the way. And we do recommend uh, closing this for travel. You've also got a propane gauge here, um, which uh, you can, you can uh, check uh, manually uh, by looking at it, or you can also, it also communicates with the touchpad inside, uh, so you can check it on your touchpad or smart device. Outside TV entertainment area, um, you've got your uh, sound bar here. Uh, that uh, has AM and FM radio, also pairs uh, to a Bluetooth device if you want to stream music, and has USB and auxiliary inputs. And the TV, if you need to access the HDMI inputs on the back of the TV, it does pull out. It uses a fairly strong magnet there though, so you have to pull a little harder than you think. Another storage compartment below that. You do have a, uh, a small pass-through area of storage there for longer items, uh, fishing poles, um, camping mats, that kind of thing. And right here is where you'll find your battery compartment. Uh, so in here are your two 12-volt batteries. Uh, these are Group 27 12-volt batteries, so they're wired together in parallel so that's positive to positive and negative to negative between the batteries then the motorhome uh, is wired uh, negative to uh, negative on one battery and uh, positive to positive on either battery uh, it can be uh, one to, to one battery one to the other or they can both be wired to the same bat same uh, battery doesn't matter um, and you'll also find in here a couple more of those 100 amp resettable circuit breakers that we talked about in the front. Uh, so if you're ever having uh, power issues, uh, that's a good place to start by resetting those circuit breakers. Also in this compartment, uh, you'll find a little uh, tie-down cleat uh, and a grommet. So that is designed if you want to uh, tie something down uh, to the uh, motorhome securely. Uh, you can run it up through there, tie off to this cleat, and then lock up the, um, the compartment. Another storage compartment here. 
This is also where you'll find the drain for your fresh water tank. And uh, this is the tank right here, as you can see, and a uh, nice big drain valve here for quick draining of that tank. This valve is open now because the uh, motorhome is winterized and there's no water in it. When you go to fill your water tank the first time, you will have to close this valve. And you'll fill that tank uh, from right here, right above it, um, just using a conventional garden hose or what we recommend, one of those white drinking water specific garden hoses so you don't get that plastic garden hose taste in your water. I think that mostly covers it around the outside. When you open the door, the uh, power step will engage. There's a lockout for that. Uh, this switch right inside the, uh, uh, the door is for the power step. Um, so up, power step is active. Down, power step is not active. You've also got a battery disconnect switch here. Uh, so when you put the RV into storage, you can uh, turn off the battery disconnect that disconnects 12 volt power to the entire motorhome. And then you have one of a couple of multiplex uh, light switches here. Uh, so you can control many of the lights and, um, and uh, also your awning uh, right from here. Uh, so your main ceiling living lights, your step well light, um, are just push button operation. Um, this is also incidentally removable and uh, can be used as a remote. Um, for the awning, you can extend and retract just like so. This is an armless wind sensor power awning. So it'll extend the full eight feet and then it will uh, tighten itself up to make sure that there's no loose canvas. It has an integrated wind sensor, so if, it, if, it, if the wind picks up and it starts flapping around, it'll sense that and it'll come in all by itself. Um, but it only takes one good wind gust to do some real damage to this style of awning. So what we recommend is if you're expecting it to be a windy day or if the wind's starting to pick up and that awning hasn't come in yet, uh, best thing to do is just bring it in. Why take the chance? Um, so you can press the uh, retract button on the remote or on the touchpad, the LCD touchpad to do that. And follow me inside the motorhome. We'll go through a few more things. So also uh, right down here near the floor is where you'll find your, um, your uh, solar panel charge controller. Uh, now this is the factory installed uh, solar panel charge controller. So this gives you a uh, accurate reading of your battery voltage, uh, but we've actually installed a larger uh, 200 watt um, solar charging system on this on this uh, motorhome which requires a more substantial uh, charge controller than that uh, so i'll show you that when we get there and you also have a uh, button here to toggle on and off your power inverter so you've got a handful of uh, power outlets on the inside of the motorhome here that can be uh, operated via the power inverter to give you 110 volt power via your 12 volt battery Um, the first thing we should do when we come into the motorhome is open up the slide and that is done from the LCD touchpad. So follow me over into the hallway here where we'll find the touchpad and I'll take you through a few things here. So this is the home screen. Uh, so on the home screen uh, you've got your master light switch so you can turn on and off uh, all of your lights. Um, you can see your monitor panel there, so it shows fresh tank, gray and black holding tanks, all three completely empty, and propane at 88% uh, full. 88% um, full, by the way, uh, is completely full with a uh, ASME uh, propane tank. You shouldn't, uh, typically you wouldn't ever get any higher than about 85% of, uh, of uh, capacity of that tank. 
Uh, you've also got monitoring here for both your, uh, your house and chassis batteries. So you can see those are both, uh, both very good. And this is where you'll start and stop your generator. Um, and also here you can see the uh, heating and cooling uh, system. So you can see that we're at 13.6 degrees right now. And uh, you can uh, toggle up and down uh, your temperature all right from the home screen. Now, all of these uh, features uh, on the home screen, you can also uh, get into more uh, depth with. Uh, so this is your uh, AGS, your auto gen start settings. Uh, right now it's disabled, but you can able, enable the auto generator start and give it all kinds of criteria here. Uh, voltage to start at, how long to run for. Um, you can also set it to uh, start uh, when it uh, senses uh, HVAC load, so heating, ventilation, and air conditioning load. So when the air conditioner needs to start, start up, the generator will automatically start. Your hour meter is there. You can even set uh, quiet time hours if there's quiet time in the park that you're camping in so that the generator won't be automatically starting up during quiet time hours. Lighting, you've got individual light switch here for all your different lighting zones or just your master on and off. Um, the, uh, those cargo bay lights the, for the storage compartments, you can turn on and off from here. Uh, remember uh, that those uh, are on here because that's one way that people often uh, run their batteries down if they don't realize that they've got those cargo lights turned on uh, when the baggage doors are closed. Um, HVAC climate control uh, were uh, set here. And uh, finally, this is where the uh, slide outs are operated from. Uh, so little uh, caution uh, uh, menu here uh, indicating that you need to have the engine turned off emergency brake on and the driver and position driver and passenger seats in the forward position for the slide out uh, to come out so we'll confirm that and then just press the extend button on the slide out with this style of slide out we do recommend bringing it all the way out or all the way in. Try to avoid stopping it halfway in or out. Uh, and the reason for that is there's actually two motors that run this slide out. And if you stop it halfway out, they can come out of sync. If you ever get your slide motors out of sync, so one side of the slide comes in uh, earlier than the other side, you should be able to just run the slide out all the way out until both motors stop and then all the way in again until both motors stop and those uh, slide motors will resync. Um, this is also from this screen where you'll control your uh, awning. Uh, we already did that, so we won't do it again, but extend and retract button for your awning. And then the last screen on this uh, touchpad is your uh, menu screen. Uh, or your settings screen so you can adjust things like screen brightness and that sort of thing. Most importantly here, uh, this is the mobile app that you'll need to download. Um, it's the Mira Vega Touch app um, from the Google Play Store or the App Store. And this gives you your uh, Mira ID and PIN number. It uses Bluetooth to connect. And once you connect the app, uh, you'll basically have this entire screen uh, available to you on your smart device. Right above that is the remote meter for the uh, 200 watt solar charging system that we installed. Uh, so the uh, charge control for that is actually uh, installed somewhere down near the batteries. This is just a remote meter, uh, but it shows you that we are currently at 13.5 uh, volts and that that battery is at 100%. So I'm not charging from the sun at all right now. Um, here in the kitchen, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, you've got your three burner propane stove top. Uh, all three of these burners uh, will work with the piezo sparker. Um, and I think well, I uh, shut off the valve to our propane bottle while we were out there. Um, so I won't get all three of those uh, lit up. But what I recommend is anytime you have that bottle refilled, the first thing you should do is come in here and just light all three of those burners. Uh, once you've lit all three of those burners, you know you've bled any air that might have been on the, in those propane lines off the system, and your automatic appliances then will have no problem starting up. That's your fridge, furnace, and hot water tank. 
The only pilot light that you have to worry about in the motorhome is for the oven. And you'll find that right underneath here. Um, so with the pilot light, turn the oven knob over to pilot. You have to push in and hold on this knob. And while holding in on that knob, you can light the pilot right underneath here at the pilot assembly. Once you see a flame there, uh, keep holding in on the knob for 10 or 15 seconds for the thermocouple to heat up. And once you can release that knob and the flame stays on, then you can turn the oven up to temperature. When you're finished using the oven, you can turn it down to pilot on and just leave that pilot running, or you can turn the oven all the way off and just relight the pilot the next time you need to. Your fridge is an automatic gas electric fridge. Um, so you can turn it on uh, with this button here. What we recommend is always leaving it in A for automatic mode. When it's in automatic mode, uh, it will uh, always run on electricity when it has electricity available. But if it didn't have electricity or you blew a breaker or something, it would sense that and it would automatically switch over to propane. You can override the automatic to only run on electricity or only run on propane. Uh, not often that you'll want to do that, but you might find that this fridge actually cools down a little faster on propane than it does on electricity. For now, I'll leave it in the automatic mode. There's also a temperature adjustment on this fridge, one being the warmest, five being the coldest. I usually start it at three, but you might have to adjust that depending on the ambient conditions where you're camping. Um, down here underneath the bed is where you'll find your power converter. So this is the power center uh, for the entire trailer, motorhome. Um, you'll find all of your 110 volt breakers here. Um, so if you ever trip a breaker, this is where you'll reset that. And uh, an assortment of fuses here for 12 volt circuits. Um, you've got quite an array of different types or different uh, amperages of fuse here. So not a bad idea to just have uh, an assorted pack of fuses on hand with you. It's not unheard of in a motorhome to blow a fuse once in a while. Uh, if you've got some spares, it'll save you some headache if that ever happens. Right next to that is your propane and carbon monoxide detector. Uh, so that will do three things. It'll alert you obviously to a potential propane leak. However, if there was a propane leak in the motorhome, you would almost certainly smell propane before this goes off. Um, it can also alert you to high levels of carbon monoxide. Um, the, uh, when that might come into play is uh, if you're ever uh, running your generator, especially if you've got the, um, the emergency exit window uh, propped open for ventilation, um, the uh, uh, generator exhausts right out the back of the RV. Uh, so do be conscious of that if you, uh, if you hear it uh, alarming for carbon monoxide. The third thing though that this does, and this is the most common, is it's, this is wired into the RV's 12 volt electrical system. So if, you, if your RV batteries get very low, this will chirp just like a smoke detector does when its battery is getting low. Um, so in that case, all you would need to do is plug in the RV or start the generator to put a charge on those batteries. Uh, with 200 watts of solar charging system plus a generator, uh, you shouldn't have to worry too much about low batteries. Um, what else in the, in the bedroom? The TV, there's a little hidden storage area behind the TV if you didn't know about it. Another one of those uh, multiplex wiring pads here for your bed lighting, ceiling lighting, um, generator start and stop, and just uh, master lighting. Um, and underneath the bed, uh, you've got a little bit of extra storage here. This is also where you'll find the stowage for the ladder. Uh, that is for the uh, drop-down power bed in the front. I didn't show you how to lower that power bed, uh, but that's included in the uh, touchpad here as well. It's under the slide section. Uh, you've got slide here, awning here, and this up-down bunk is for the power bed. On the topic of that power bed though, there's two pins. Um, these are for when the motorhome is in travel. Uh, when you're in travel, you'll wanna put those two pins in and that will prevent the electric 
bed lift mechanism from creeping down uh, as you're traveling. Um, that's a common thing that we see with, uh, with Hurricane Motorhomes. So make sure when you're traveling that you put those uh, pins in place. And likewise, make sure you remove them when you go to uh, lower the bed down. Um, ladder for that would attach right there. What else have I missed? Uh, smoke detector we didn't talk about. Uh, so you've got a, a smoke detector here. The smoke detector uses its own 9 volt battery. Um, so this uh, is not wired into the RV's electrical system. Uh, you'll want to check this uh, smoke detector periodically to make sure that the battery hasn't gone dead just by pressing and holding the test button. Um, you can hear the, uh, um, that the battery hasn't gone dead. Uh, you've also got uh, seat belts here in your forward facing dinette seats and side facing sofa and you have one uh, child safety seat tether uh, here if you've got a child seat to install. Up in the cab of the motorhome there's a couple of things to take you through here. Um, you've got, I talked about your um, uh, generator start so you can start your generator from here as well and uh, just like the manual start on the outside uh, of the generator itself uh, you would want to push uh, down and hold the uh, uh, stop button until the light comes on that means it's primed with fuel and then you can actually start up the generator um, this is also where you'll find just some uh, uh, some light switches and your uh, sunshade uh, the sunshade will come down and stop at the uh, at the bottom level um, and when the uh, motorhome is in motion uh, you'll only be able to bring that down uh, to just above eye level um, the little button uh, up at the top here uh, this is uh, to reset that um, that stop uh, that end stop for the shade if you ever need to uh, we've set it up now, so you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't need to do that, uh, but uh, uh, occasionally uh, those, those will uh, need to be adjusted uh, for the end stop for when you're in motion. Um, you've also got your uh, electronic leveling system here. Uh, pretty simple to operate. We've got the motorhome in the shop right now, so I'm not actually going to start it up uh, to do that, but you do need to have the engine running. Um, to run the leveling system. You also need to have the emergency brake engaged to run the leveling system. Uh, then you can turn it on uh, using the uh, on switch. Uh, that won't even light up right now because the engine's not running. Uh, but when the motorhome's running and the emergency brake is engaged, uh, press that button, uh, these lights will light up. Uh, you can put it in manual mode uh, to uh, manually level left to right or front to back. But most of the time, what we recommend and what most people do is uh, just use the automatic uh, button and the motorhome will level itself. When you're ready to go, just press retract all jacks and um, it'll bring everything up. I talked uh, about the ability to uh, boost your engine battery using your RV batteries. And that's what this switch here for, the emergency start switch. So if you just press and hold that switch for a few seconds, it's using 12 volt power from the uh, RV battery uh, to boost the engine battery, and you could turn over the engine. The in-dash screen um, is pretty simple to operate, but uh, just a couple of things to uh, take you through there. Things like, things like uh, volume control which I'm struggling with here. Help me out, cameraman. Up top, there we go, there's the volume control. Uh, so uh, with the, uh, with the in-dash screen, um, the home button will take you to the different uh, uh, capabilities of that screen. Uh, you can sync with Bluetooth. Uh, you do have a, uh, a navigation, um, uh, a navigation program here. Um, this uh, quite likely will need to set itself up so it may not be working perfectly when you uh, uh, first uh, drive the motorhome away uh, but it will uh, dial itself in as, uh, as 
There you go. And how do we get back to radio? The other uh, functionality that you have here that I like to point out is you have a rear view camera on the motorhome. Uh, it will come, come on automatically when you put the motorhome into reverse. Um, but you can also uh, uh, you can also run that camera the entire time you're traveling. Uh, obviously, you need to have the uh, accessory power turned on to do that. And I think for the most part that covers things. Um, sorry, I'm just realizing now that I. I uh, didn't take you into the bathroom. So another multiplex uh, uh, light switch here on the wall uh, for bath lighting and uh, uh, living room lighting. Um, not a lot of things to cover in the bathroom. Uh, notably, the power outlet in here is a GFCI protected outlet. So it's got the test and reset buttons like the ones in the bathroom in your home. Um, Big difference in an RV though is this is wired in series with several other power outlets. Uh, so if you uh, trip this breaker, you'll lose power at all of your power outlets. Just come in here, press reset, everything should reset the whole circuit. And anytime you're using the uh, RV sewer system, you want to make sure and use a good potent RV toilet chemical. Uh, so the chemical comes in powder, liquid, or tablet form, doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, but when you add chemical to the tank, you'll want to add some water with it. So add some chemical into the toilet bowl, push halfway down on the foot flush to fill the bowl with water, and then push all the way down to dump the whole works into the tank. Um, you'll want to put new toilet chemical into the tank uh, immediately after you dump the holding tanks. You dump all of the chemical out, so you need to put new chemical in there. You can do that right after dumping the tanks and it can sit in there as long as it needs. It never goes bad and it uh, um, won't harm anything to sit in there. So hopefully you've learned something about the 2019 Hurricane uh, 29M motorhome by Thor Motor Coach. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at Trailblazer RV or through our website, trailblazerrv.com. Thanks for watching.